Well, leading up to the 10th Basha Huru Festival, the National Museum of African Art is hosting a 10-day series of art experiences titled The Demonstration at Constitutional Hill until the 24th of September. The 10-day art experience will focus on race and the creative community. The demonstration explores our shared future while reckoning with our racial past. Well, joining me now to discuss this further is the director of the National Museum of African Art, Nare Blankenberg, and exhibition curator, Siwa Mkoboza. A warm welcome to both my guests. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. Um, let's start with you, uh, Nare. Just ta 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 take us through uh, you know, the, the, the exhibition itself, and, and what was the thinking behind putting it together in the first place? Um, hi, thank you, and very nice to be here. Um, we, uh, NAMAFA is the Smithsonian National Museum of African Art. It's one of 21 museums of the Smithsonian Institution, and it's the only one developed, um, devoted exclusively to art of the African continent. Um, and we have a collection of over 12,000 um, artwork from about the 10th century to today. Um, and um, we've started a new strategy um, to ensure that we have a much greater presence on the continent, face-to-face, um, -face working with artists, um, much more collaborative so that artists can see the work itself, um, and working with local institutions. And so the NAMAFA plus Joburg is one of this initiatives. It's an experimental initiative um, where we collaborate with local artists, curators, um, and institutions in order to develop a cool experience. Um, and so we brought on Siwam Goboza to curate uh, an exhibition, experience, installations, conversations um, on the theme Reckoning with Our Racial Past, Our Shared Future, which is a Smithsonian strategic priority um, for the United States and, of course, globally, and a theme that I think both countries share. Mm. So, Siwa, you as a curator have been uh, tasked with this very difficult, uh, you know, uh, a job of having to create, as, as Nara has explained for us, a, a platform, a, a, a space through which, through creativity, we can start having conversations around, you know, in South Africa at least, you know, our racial past, but, uh, but also just talking about how racism and, and equality is, is, you know, still a topical issue today. Uh, talk to us about that, how you obviously were able to infuse art uh, with this all-important conversation. Uh, good morning, and good morning to your viewers. Um, I think for me, really, the show was about recognizing the patterns, looking at the patterns, looking at the things that are happening on the ground. And I think Smithsonian recognized that there is power in seeing what is happening on the ground and how can an institution support this kind of endeavor. The artists that have been brought onto this uh, I purely describe them as demonstrators themselves. They are actively in their communities, in their work, and in their lives are making visible problems that are systematic to South Africa through creativity. We partnered with Smithsonian and the Moleskine Foundation and Constitution Hill, who all have and the pillars believe that creativity could be used for social change. Mm, mm. Some, I, you know, I read in an article about coming up with the title, the demonstration, and, and how how much of that had to do with providing proof and evidence of, of this reality that so many people have to deal with on a daily basis. And I was, you know, called to remember the video footage of, of, George, of George Floyd and, and a lot of the protests that we saw sort of coming out in response to his killing. Uh, just talk to us about why you came up with that specific title and, and, and why it was important for you to, to, to present the artwork in that manner? I think in the day and age that we live in of social media where images are produced at, with such a rate and with such a responsibility, I think with working with an institution and an educational program and a constitutional um, institution like uh, Constitution Hill to provide responsible images that speak about these topics which are often so sensitive and so tough to speak about. The day and age that we live in, we consume so much images that we don't sometimes realize the, the psychological effects that these images could be leaving in our psyche. And I think what 
and the reason why we are live streaming and we are engaging with people on social media and engaging with the media to begin with is because we want the people and the people are at the causes. The demonstration is nothing with the people because it's through the people that the proof is made visible. Mm -hmm. And institutions are as relevant as the people that walk in and out of it. And Smithsonian is recognized as an institution. It needs to be playing a role in regenerating the ecosystems at grassroots levels on the continent and across the diaspora. Mm. Uh, Nari, just talk to us as, you know, the, the Smithsonian. How, in, in, in your time there, has the conversation around race and, and racial injustice changed and evolved over the, the last couple of years? You mentioned how, as an organization, you want to prioritize uh, 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 this particular issue and, 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 and because of that have entered into all of these partnerships to make that a reality. You've witnessed how this conversation has evolved over time. Talk to us about that and, and, and how art continues to be at the center of the kind of social change we need. Yeah, uh, um, the conversation is an evolving one. It's a complicated one, and it's a um, it, it, it's a difficult one to have. Um, luckily for us at Namafa, we work with artists who are able to, through art, tackle the subject with a lot of nuance, um, a lot of layering, a lot of questioning, a lot of emotionality. Um, and I think, you know, your previous question about a lot of the Im the horrific imagery we've seen around the killing of George Floyd, the protests that ensued, Breonna Taylor, um, Trayvon Martin, the list goes on and on and on. Um, we need to find a new way of imagining a society that isn't broken along racialized lines. What we have right now is a system that continues to be perpetuated since there was legislated inequalities both in South Africa and in the United States. We need to imagine a different way of relating to one another, of creating institutions, of creating systems. Um, and I think this is where artists play such an important part. They unlock our imagination for new things that are possible. Um, both paradigms within ourselves, emotions, ways of processing events, um, where they really explored that, that, that um, you know, things are not always what they seem. The inconsistencies of what you see on Instagram or in the news that capture the world in a certain way. Mm and how to really reflect and to, to help us be a little bit more critical in reflecting on that. Last night we saw an incredible moving performance by Patrick Bongoy from the DRC who really um, spoke about literally the, the performance was on fire and the ghosts of memory and the impact of extraction, mineral extraction, economic extraction, human extraction um, on the continent, particularly in his home country of the DRC. We have Ayanna B. Jackson's installation coming up, um, which is a reflection on the transatlantic um, slave trade and is a powerful celebration of um, imagination, creativity, and resistance through women, um, and that really needs to be seen. Blessing Gobeni's installation is a, is, is a, is a joyful in some ways um, celebration of what it means to be a person, a human, as he puts it, a black child um, existing and determined to exist on the continent today. And so you see all the, the complexity of this. Luke Radoff, pardon me, um, also looks at identity um, right. and uniforms and how they play on, on who we are. And so those artists really demonstrate, you know, how we're tackling these conversations. We're amplifying these voices so that there's a little bit more thoughtfulness, complexity, and, and deep introspection when we right. talk of this subject. Well, I want to thank both our guests for, for joining us today to help us have this conversation. And, of course, we know that the exhibition is still on until next Saturday, so we encourage uh, everyone to go out and see it. But uh, a huge thank you to both of you. That's the director of the National Museum of African Art, Nare Blankenberg, and exhibition curator, Siwa Mkoboza.